Hello, we are back here in Imprisoned, where we left off last time. I have slept since last time. It might take me a moment to get warmed up again. Ooh, interesting. This is our ultimate goal here. Ooh. So we're probably going to have to access it through that window, I suppose. Let's get ourselves on in here. Yeah, and obviously we can't flip that switch. Wait, what? Uh... <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to work that way. Uh, I'm going to assume that that's a bug. So, we're not gonna do that. One moment, please. Yeah. Yep, that's accessible there. This doesn't have an alternate way, right? Yeah. Hmm. It actually needs to be like that, I suppose. Ooh, but then... Well, I guess we could bootstrap it, right? Yeah, that's probably our ultimate goal here, is just to bootstrap it. Eh, I'll put it there, because why not? I don't think we can get an angle for... Well, we could, but not without interrupting our own beam. So, yeah. Let's just do it like that for now. That should be sufficient for bootstrap. There we go, it's bootstrapped. And now we're done, I suppose. Well, that was easy. Yeah, those part of claws do not wait for me at all anymore. <laughs> They're so speedy. I've been meaning to talk to you. This, uh, vision you had, the data stream overload. How did it feel? Having your consciousness hijacked felt good to you? Just don't take this too lightly, okay? We're sturdier than our ancestors, but a mind is still a fragile thing. Right, let's head to number six, I suppose. Oh, right, I also forgot, uh, where is it? It's in, it's in this menu, right? Uh, yeah, right, we can see our progress here. So we got the Lost Puzzle already. There's another star, which I'm pretty sure is that picture that I haven't figured out yet. We did the lab, and just got the remaining puzzles to do. I think I saw... Is there a question mark when I was back here? I thought I saw a question mark, maybe I misremembered though. On the compass at the top of the screen, I do not see question mark. All right, let's head on to the next puzzle for now. Something I was thinking about uh, while I was, you know, laying in bed last night is they don't they don't have clothes on them, right? Like none of them are wearing any kind of clothing or accessories or anything really. They're just kind of walking around entirely naked. And I mean, I guess they don't really need clothes because these bodies will last longer, be more durable than clothing would be. But they, they have, like, customized avatars and such, right? Like, they have on, on social media. Yeah, they've all got decorative avatars, and they, they are different colors, so they do want to, like, express themselves in different ways. I just think it's kind of strange that they don't use clothing for that purpose, you know? So I'm cat sitting Yakut's cat, Bruce, and he keeps peeing on my charging pod. Is there anything I can do to prevent this? Clean it very thoroughly, so not a single trace of smell remains. And it was hard without the ability to smell, but we do have some cleaning agents that should do the trick. Contact me on private if you need a list. Oh, and make sure Bruce isn't distressed by something. Cats don't like being moved from their territory. Maybe it would be easier if you just moved him back to Yakut's place and fed him there. No, Bruce is just a word I'm not going to say on YouTube. 
He loves peeing on anything electrical, chewing on cables, and generally just breaking stuff. This is normal, and I warned you, Pellegrino. I would I could have given him to Neith. She's used to him. But he's so fuzzy and I love him. Ah, cats. So it's confirmed. They have noses, but they can't smell. Yeah, it's hard enough to build to smell. Yeah, so the noses are just kind of vestigial to make them look like humans. That's, that's another curious thing is how much... How much they look like humans. Like, in the first game... They, uh... The, the feet in the first game were not like this. <laughs> the first game feet did not have five toes like humans. It's very strange. There's definitely some weird obsession with being human instead of, like, being their own thing to improve on the legacy of humans or whatever. They're just obsessed with humanity, I guess. Right, what was the other stuff? Read 10 social media entries. Yay! Paris was an ancient city sometimes called the City of Light. One of the great capitals of the world, home to tradition and innovation alike. It was the birthplace of one of the greatest revolutions in history, the moment that gave birth to modernity and all its glories and horrors alike. The spirit of freedom that was born here, although suppressed, right, although it was suppressed by enemies and traitors, never entirely faded, and it lived on in the minds of artists for many generations. Maybe something of that spirit still remains in us. Doesn't seem like there's any kind of way to like zoom in or view a picture in more in more detailed ways. Yeah, this is the one I'll have to keep in mind. Alright, let's do six. Hidden. Interesting. Or are these plates everywhere? Still curious about their significance, if anything. Is this area out here about... Hmm. I like how they're incorporating the purple fizzlers in the puzzles more directly now. I... It's nice to see more variety in the, uh, the layouts of the puzzles compared to the first game. Alright, this is our ultimate goal. We just need two objects to put on there. Alright, can't do that yet. really help us right now, though. There's also this over here. Ooh, I think that's for bootstrapping, probably. There we go, that should work, I think. Right, but I can't do that quite yet. Does it need both of these active at the same time, or just either one? Hmm. There's also this area over here to be... Uh, considering. Yeah, let's probably do stuff over there instead for now. Okay, so that does work. So we do need to bootstrap it from here, at least. That would work initially, and then we'll change the bootstrap, I think. Yeah, we can re-bootstrap it. Ooh. Hmm. Will this work? Yeah, looks like it will. Now we can move this. Oh, it doesn't even give me a prompt. I'm on the other side of this. Interesting. <laughs> Sticking over a little bit. Because with the barriers, you get a prompt when you're on the other side and it just forces you to walk across. 
with the purple fields, you don't get that. Alright. Actually, do we even... Alright, that doesn't really help me too much right now, though. Right, I just need to add that one as well to bootstrap this. There we go. Now we're good. And we're done. That was it. Alright, it's pointing us at that now, but we'll just walk around until we find 7 and 8. Here we go. Backward propagation. Here is our ultimate goal. We have a red source there. Oh, this kind of looks purple to me. Doesn't it? Oh, because there is a purple field behind it, that's why. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I supposed to do about this, actually. Missing something? Ah, uh, just in case, why not? Strapped now. Ooh. Guess my positioning was not very good for that. Gotta reposition it. Oh well. Uh, we're kinda limited by angle with that. Let's try that, see if that's better. like a one-time thing? No. Isn't that curious? Right, I need to add that as well, so it's bootstrap there as well. There we go. Now that works. Easy fix. Did you see how 1K solved that one? No, sorry. Was really clever. I think some of these voice lines might just play depending on the number of puzzles you solve, and not actually specific to that puzzle. But I have started watching a little bit of some other playthroughs, and uh, I've noticed stuff like that happening. Positional interchange. sense. I think we want to start this, actually. I think I see some possibilities here. Yeah, 
Now that lets us take this out. There's that taken care of now. Interesting. I'm guessing we want to connect this to stuff and then put it up there. I guess we don't need to connect it in advance, actually. Yeah, we can see it without connecting it in advance. Hmm. That needs to stay powered, though. We want it to power itself. That would mean it would be a red signal. We can't see the blue from here, though. All the reds from here, though. Where would I get power from, though? Because we only have a blue source, right? There's no red source anywhere in this puzzle, I don't think. Out of ideas, let's try this with the other color. bit of a bootstrap assistance there, isn't it? There we go. So now it's bootstrapped, at least. How does that help us, though? So that gives us red, this gives us a blue. I guess we need to connect it... We can connect it to this one in advance, at least. Not sure what to do about these, though. Let's, let's redo this. Go now it's bootstrapped again. That gets us into here. We do need both of these, I think. It's not an either or situation. It's a double check. Oh whoopsie. Yeah, we need both. That cannot see this. Well, I think the only solution then is to trade places of these things. What does this do for us? Interesting. That can also hit the other red here, right? Yes, it can. Right, I didn't connect it to the, uh... You can connect that as well. Is what color do we want that to be? I 
guess we want it to be a higher blue source, I suppose. I mean, I need to go and reconnect it, because uh, otherwise it's gonna con- Oh wait, this works? Excuse me? That's allowed? That's interesting. I did not expect that to be allowed at all, actually. Huh. Well, it makes my life a little bit easier, at least. Yeah, here we go. This is what we needed. Ta-da! I tried every wrong thing first, got it in the end. <laughs> Now we need to work on the... other star. Maybe it really is in that lake by the statue. And the picture is just kind of deceptive the way it's presented. Doesn't let me zoom in at all. I mean, it's not like I would get a much better view by going there in person. Yeah, it's somewhere behind the right side of the statue. Which I, I looked around here a little bit last time. I don't think I fully explored the waters, though. Could it also be in the cliffside, maybe? I'm not really seeing anything. What looks further in the distance? They did say the statue f had fallen down after it was made, right? But where did it fall from? Maybe just tilt it forward a bit. Is it referring to the shadow of the statue? Like, these both look like water to me. Or something. climbing in this game, I suppose. I'm missing. It's not under this, right? Not seen anything. Interpreting this, like it is clearly like they can X marks the spot situation, right? There's some text up here as well, but I don't think it translated that for me. I mean, there is another body of water, isn't there? But 
see, it looks like it's... I, it looks like it's closer to me than the legs. So it looks like it's between the statue and the legs, which is really confusing to me because... We're already coming up on the legs right here. And there's not another body of water yet. This is just a starting area. Hmm. Hey, I can climb on this rock at least. It's really weird how inconsistent it is which rocks you can climb on and which you can't. I don't know, the perspective is really strange in this picture. This is the only other body of water in the whole area, right? And it maybe could be interpreted as being that one that's pictured in the picture there. But it's not exactly fitting. I'm not even sure what I'm looking for. Like, I thought I was looking for a star, right? But maybe it's something else and then a star will appear at the statue where the inscription was. I mean, it might not even be water that is signifying... to, like, climb up this somehow? Like, this is what I'm talking about. It, it seems like you should be able to climb on this, but... it really doesn't want you... up here. Oh, now I got you up here. I'm still unsure about what these structures are about. Yeah, climbing here is not exactly gonna happen. Did we get up here somehow? Uh, maybe? No... Not unless I could smuggle a cube out of a level. Guess I don't think there's a way to get up on this one. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Yep, not happening. We're on the wrong side of the statue anyway. Ah. I don't mind if y'all skip ahead to... to when I actually do something interesting. I even looking for is this thing. Is there 
any kind of... Like, am I gonna flip a lever or something? Or... Am I gonna find an X on the ground that I have to press E on? That was a strange change in music for some reason. I must just be completely misinterpreting the image somehow, but I'm not sure how. get a similar vantage point to where the image is taken either, right? Yeah, that vantage point is in the air, basically. Smoke on the horizon? Huh. What can I do for you? It's pretty clear to me that she doesn't want us to proceed with what we're doing. I find that deeply concerning. That said, there are clearly other forces at play here as well, so I'm trying my best to remain open to a more positive interpretation. Exactly. But we don't really understand anything yet, and this Prometheus is suspiciously absent, so I remain cautious. Hmm. I was wondering if maybe we had to stand in the right place for the perspective to line up, but... This vantage point is so high up, and we don't have a way to get that high up. And I don't even know what I'd be lining up with. That's the only thing in focus that seems even vaguely related, but there's nothing there. I've already checked.
Oh! So from a distance, I can see that there's this one here, unlike these. And it's just obscured by trees. Okay. Okay. The... That image is really unclear about what I'm even supposed to be looking at there. Well, let's go pick up that star. Some over here, right? Oh yeah, it's blinking on the compass. Thank you, compass, for guiding me towards the star. Oh, it's a different place than I expected it to be. Or a different place than I remembered, rather. Yeah, this is in a different place than I remembered. Finally! The wheel turns, but without the road, it cannot move. So much running around. I'm not so sure how I feel about it just yet. I mean, it is fun to explore environments, but... It's also just kind of... a waste of time, in some ways. I mean, the, the first game had much smaller environments to wander around in. I mean, it's basically forcing our hand there, isn't it? Unless we're supposed to ignore that. Yeah, definitely not. So we definitely have to do what where it lets us. I mean, it's really restricting us, so... Yeah, there was- that was pretty obvious. Why- why make it so easy, though? Daedalus was imprisoned in the very labyrinth he had created. His only solace was his son, Icarus. To escape their plight, he fashioned wings of feathers and wax. He warned his son to fly neither too high nor too low. But his son, enraptured by the freedom of flight, flew too close to the sun. Thus the wax in his wings melted, and he fell to his death. What was the sun's error? Interesting options. Hubris, the flame of the sun belongs to the gods. Disobedience, he should have listened to his father. Carelessness, he did not use his wings correctly. Impatience, if he'd waited, if he wanted to soar so high, he should have built better wings. Lawlessness, he should never have attempted to escape the labyrinth. Idiocy, the wings are made from wax. I mean, come on. <laughs> I 
I mean, these technically are both true here. I'm gonna go with impatience. What matters the substance of his wings if the sky was not meant for him? After the death of his son, Daedalus withdrew in sorrow to a foreign land. King Minos came looking for the craftsman to exact his revenge. The answer to a riddle revealed where Daedalus dwelled, but for Minos, that answer was his ruin. Consider King Minos burned in his bath as you seek your own answer. Big red laser. The mega structure, it's opening. Three receivers, three towers, three beams, as we suspected. I think this is an invitation. Doesn't look that inviting to me. If you consider the size of the entire structure, then that opening must be big enough to drive a building through. Oh, the veto. You want us to go in there, into the creepy triangular maw of death. Maw of death? I think it looks charming. Byron's right. We're here to explore, and this is a mystery worth investigating. This technology could change everything. Oh. Uh... All right. I'm not winning this, am I? Nope. Let's meet up with the VTOL, everybody. We're going in. App, please. Eight out of eight, two out of two. Can't do that yet. One out of one, two out of two. We are good. my analysis of the particle clouds. At first I thought they might be some kind of nanotechnology, but I was wrong. It's a lot worse than that. Worse what than nanotech? What we're looking at is a completely unknown type and state of matter. Completely inexplicable within our understanding of physics. Created and manipulated by... someone. Fascinating. Interesting. So, this tower that appeared right before we left this area apparently was needed for the green beam to make it to the pyramid properly. It's almost like we're arriving here almost a little bit early and they're still having to make last minute fixes for us to be able to do this. How curious. I think. In this area... Oh, it doesn't even tell me if there's anything to find here. I guess we're pretty much finished exploring what this area has for now, anyway. You know, it's come back, I think. Come on, people! Get on board! We haven't got all day! Yaku! <laughs> Take <laughs> us walk in. right through him. Aye, aye, sir. Have any of you ever read an ancient writer called Ian Banks? I guess not. He postulated the concept of the outside context problem. That's when a society encounters something so advanced, so different, that they simply could not have conceived of it. That's what this is. This whole place is one giant outside context problem. And we're headed right into it. That's a bit smaller than a building in my opinion. I think I can set down over there. Should I? Please do. I can't wait to get a closer look. Setting down. Okay, everyone. 
We need to explore as much as we can, separately if need be, but stay in touch. Record anything interesting you find, and pay special attention to any clues as to who built this place and why. The schematics we found in that lab were extremely incomplete. So if you can find any more of those, that would be great. I think someone should stay at the VTOL just in case. I volunteer you. See you later, Al. Ominous. Ooh, I love these aesthetics. Look how beautiful this is. A Zen Garden kind of place. my way around this place, but not fully. Not even sure there's anything up there anyway. Alright, let's just check the terminal. From Arcades in our Likens. Essays on humankind reaching adulthood. What I propose, then, is that we are not born as entirely free agents, responsible only for ourselves. The very core of what we are, our sentience, separates us from and elevates us above the animal kingdom. As I have argued, this is not a matter of arrogance, but of responsibility. However, this blessing also demands something else from us, something more personal than responsibility, and that is loyalty. Our ancestors, less atomized than we are, experienced a crude version of this loyalty, swearing allegiance to tribes, races, nations, and other semi-fictional concepts. This fragmented understanding was easily exploited and led to many conflicts. We can condemn them for that, or we can choose to believe that these are necessary historical steps towards our growth. But above all, we must stop indulging in such childlike behavior. Our species can no longer afford to believe in Mother Russia or Uncle Sam. Neither, however, can we afford to indulge in the adolescent ripples uh, misanthropy, rejecting the many gifts we have been lucky enough to receive, not from above, but from the history of our species. To put it simply, each of us owes a burden of loyalty to humanity itself, to the human project across time and space. This is not a minor matter or some abstract issue for, for philosophers. It is a profound and significant part of every human life. It is a universal source of meaning and hindsight that can bind us together and set us on a path for a brighter future. And it is also a division, a line that must held a, a line that must held against. Is that a typo? Shouldn't it say must be held? Anyway, a line that must held against those who preach the gospel of self-annihilation. We ignore it at our peril. Arkady Legdrenin stood by this belief to the bitter end. Without him, the archive would not exist. As we owe humanity our loyalty, so we owe a more personal debt to those individuals who gave everything for our story to continue. What is going on with the music? That was strange. There's like a... Yeah, that hum muted and muffled in that was kind of strange to me. But uh, yeah, collaboration, working together for a better, brighter future. Yes, please. Can we get on that, please? <laughs> Instead of having half of us go in the other direction. Uh, if only things are so simple. Hold on a second, 1K. I think I can find an override for that door. Maybe after that, you can help me with this elevator? 
One problem at a time. What's going on with these file structures? Okay, door should be opening. Now, about the elevator. Actually, the elevator's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No idea where I am, but it's working. Don't go too far. Try to circle back. On it. Isn't this an incredible space? Look at it all, it's beautiful. That's good, that's excellent. I find that a lot of people these days can't see the beauty in things created by human hand. They can look at an ant colony or a coral reef and be impressed, but if it was made by humans, they just don't see it. It's good to be humble as an individual, but we have to be careful not to lose track of our accomplishments as a species. If we're impressed by the complex patterns produced by animals, then this, this should be breathtaking. I mean, you can be impressed by both. Not sure if there needs to be much of a division between the two. That is quite ominous, isn't it? Well, I guess she's just gonna stay on that terminal forever. I wonder if I would have been able to read anything on it if I got there before her or if she would have gone to the other terminal. Interesting. That's another thing where I wonder what would have happened if I got there first. Okay, just checking. I mean, it's gotta be artificial light, right? Because we're inside of the pyramid. I do like when nature and structure blend together like this. Although I imagine it's not a very practical environment for most animals. Wow. Doesn't this remind you of the fire breaks in control? These statues we don't know the meaning of yet. Mushrooms. Hey, 1K, can we talk for a second? That whole thing with the elevator just gave me the creeps. When we first arrived here, I was really excited. It's such a huge place, the technology is so advanced. If we figure out what it all means, we could really change the future of New Jerusalem. The mayor says we have to avoid repeating the mistakes our ancestors made, to stay humble, to not reach too far. And that sounds very abstract, but I've seen the ancient cities. I've seen how much they built, how much they grew how far they fell. So, I've been thinking, what if all this sets us on the same path? What if this is too much power for anyone to control? But here's our options. You're right, this place can be dangerous, but we need to understand it. I think it's more complex than that. Power isn't necessarily good or bad. I don't think what went wrong with our ancestors was too much power. Honestly, I think it's too early to tell. I think your original impulse was correct. New Jerusalem needs this technology. The mirror's, the mirror's promise, premise is wrong. He's assuming history can only develop in one way. I mean, there's lots of different things that could be said here, and I agree at least partially with a lot of these here, but... I 
can't really say what I wanted to say, which is that a lot of times you just need more nuance. You need to not necessarily destroy power, but like think about better ways to utilize it. You know, reframe systems and power structures, redesign them, make things better. And uh, then that leads to the question like, what is the goal that you're making them better for? And it's, and like, it's, it's all a lot of different things to consider that are interconnected. And uh, yeah, it's too much for me to discuss and go into right now. So what do you think it was? What made our ancestors destroy themselves? It was actually a lack of power with more control over their biology they would have survived. They got their priorities wrong as they had properly invested in medicine for the virus, they would have survived. They weren't careful about the side effects of their growth, otherwise the virus would never have been released. Both of them wanted to do things differently, but their political systems wouldn't let them. It was just bad luck, a confluence of bad things happening all at once, they almost made it. it doesn't matter what it was, we're not them. Lots of interesting responses again. I mean, there is this option, which is technically true, but I mean, there just would have been something else around the corner, right? This one's the one that really resonates the most with me. Not sure which one to pick, though. Because these are- this is a particularly complex issue, like, it's more nuanced than just this statement right here. There's a lot of depth to this problem. I think this one kind of ties into this one, really. Because, you know, systems, the systems that we bind ourselves to, like, politics and governments and such, they, they have to change as growth occurs, right? Because, like, they, they kind of work at a small scale, but then as things keep growing and growing, the, the system has to change. So that's- I think it's like a side effect of the growth, really. That's the- that's one way of interpreting it, at least. But that's exactly what the mayor thinks. Their obsession with growth damaged the planet, and that's what killed them. Aren't these two options basically the same? Yeah, what what's the difference between these two options? They're basically saying the same thing. Yeah, you know, our options are it didn't kill them, they're still here in us because Alexander Jonah believes in civilization technology. There were ways of controlling those side effects, they failed to use them, but that doesn't mean we have to. But it's not the growth itself that's the problem, it's how you grow. I guess the mayor may be right after all. No, I don't agree with the mayor, but like... I think this one is really... Like, this one is a... A short version of this one being the longer version. I'm gonna say this. You're right. Sometimes I just get too pessimistic. We do have choices to make. That was the whole point of the simulation. Thanks for talking to me, 1K. I know we're in the middle of something, but I kind of needed that. And you know what I need? I need to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. See you next time.